What is up, people of YouTube? I am Rugaisan. Alright, I'm going to do something a little different for my channel. And I'm actually going to do a non-story spoiler review for Power Rangers. Okay, it's going to be a little difficult for me to do a review about this without spoiling the story. <clears throat> um, so, let me start off by saying that if you're, how do I put this, if you're going to compare the movie to the Americanized 1993 Power Rangers series don't alright especially if you're looking on like you know various you know YouTube channels that have been reviewing this saying you know the movie sucks you know it's nothing like the TV series it's not the movie is not supposed to be like the TV show other than the names okay when you when you're going to the theaters or if you download it or just are you gonna wait till it comes out on like Hulu or Netflix or just various or certain websites or anyways the move the Power Rangers movie is supposed to be taking from like the very popular series Super Sentai or Power Rangers in the night in the early 90s as like a defining baseline you know teenagers with attitude are supposedly be like protectors of the earth or whatever anyways the opening sequence for the Power Rangers movie it it actually hooks you it hooks you to staying in your seat to watch the movie Again, I really want to, but I'm trying not to spoil the story, okay? The opening sequence is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Brian Cranston, some of you have seen him in like you know like Malcolm in the Middle uh, Breaking Bad the legendary pictures version of Godzilla uh, Trumbo um, and of course he voiced a couple of monsters in the American version of Power Rangers back in the 90s. He plays Zordon. And oh, like I said, I want to but I, like I said, I can't spoil the story. But his performance as Zordon 
was just wow. And it's nothing, like I said, the movie is nothing exactly like the TV show. Okay, the movie is just a more of a realistic type deal. You know, like if you look at the TV show, you see, like, you know, the Power Rangers are active in gymnastics, karate, helping out the environment or whatever. That's the TV show. The TV show is supposed to be cheesy. It's supposed to be like that of like the early Japanese Godzilla movies where it's cheesy it's like not so much campy it's like you have your action you have your giant monsters in the TV show It's supposed... The TV show is, like I said, it's supposed to be cheesy. It's supposed to be, you know, that level of cheesy where it actually starts creating, you know, a fan base, a following, where it's supposed to, like, you know, get everyone on some level hooked. The movie version, or I should say the 2017 version, I should say, is supposed to be in a way, it's supposed to be not as cheesy, it's supposed to be serious. A couple of years back, where, you know, like, somebody made an internet short about like you know Power Rangers set like after what is it like 20 30 years give or take where like the machine empire finally took over the earth most of the Power Rangers are either like dead or went so deep underground that they're hiding in plain sight but still hidden you get the idea had uh, Katie Sackhoff and James Vanderbeek where it's like the darkest like fan based Power Rangers like short it's the same one that you know Jason David Frank like he liked it but he wasn't something that he would endorse you know because it would take away from what it was supposed to be and that was for you know kids which I completely understand okay the 2017 Power Rangers film is not as dark as that internet movie short but it's dark enough that you can still take your kids to go see it but not under the age of 13 there's some language in it there's Like a couple of sexual innuendo jokes. Yes, there really is. And you 
and like I said, it's not really something for children under the age of 13 to go see. I mean, sure, you can tell, sure, you can, like, explain to them, like, after the movie why, you know, they said the things that they did, and they're confused about it, or, you know, then you have to start getting to the birds and the bees, anyways... It's just, like I said, it's just dark enough. It's, the character, like the, the five teenagers, you know, Billy, Zach, Trini, Kimberly, and Jason, they're depict more of a, Kind of like more of a modern day, you know, what teenagers are going through. You know, like getting bullied at school. Um, having to deal with, you know, like the natural teenage drama. Stuff like that. Again, it's not supposed to be like how the TV show is where, you know, all five kids get along, like, right off the bat. Now, in the movie, they actually have to work on being a team. In a way, it's like how the first Avengers were. Like, each one of them went off to do their own thing, but, like, at a certain event, they came together. This one is not quite as similar as the the Avengers one. But it's close enough. Like I said, they have to build up, like, the teamwork. Instead of, you know, letting it happen instantly. Which, which is actually pretty good. Now, a lot of people have seen, like, the images for Alpha 5, how it's, like, how Alpha is not looking like his TV counterpart. He's not supposed to look like the TV counterpart. Like I said, the movie itself should only take away certain key parts of the TV show and give it a more modern feeling to it. You know, Alpha 5 is supposed to be like this, you know, alien robot... That's supposed to look like an alien race built him. That's why he looks the way he does in the movie. He's supposed to look like an alien race built him. Not something that that looks like the human race built it. But more of an alien race. Which I actually like. I mean, some of you might disagree with it, but that's how it's supposed to look. Zordon actually does play a role other than mentor. But again, that it would involve me talking about the story. And I I re like I want to, but I'm not going to. Like I said like earlier. He Zordon had has like a bigger role. If it 
sounds misleading, I'm sorry. But he actually has a bigger role than being like how he like how he was in the uh, TV show where he was like, you know, just a mere like mentor offering offering guidance. The movie he has a bigger role. So and so does Rita Repulsa. Rita was played by Elizabeth Banks, who a lot of people hate because like she sounded a bit over the top. But after watching the movie, I kind of get like her take on the character so in a way yes it was like a tad over the top but I thought she did a pretty good job Another thing that a lot of people have a hard time getting behind was the Zords. It okay. You got to understand. Again, the movie is supposed to be different from the TV show like I said before. The TV show, it's supposed to look like low budget, you know, like giant monster versus, you know, five prehistoric beasts just come together and to form a Megazord. The movie version, it looks the way it does is because they're taking a page from Transformers and yes they you heard right instead of looking like something out of like the TV show which a lot of people were expecting but at the same time they're trying to look like a more I wouldn't say like more realistic but it would look like something that would how the hell I put this something that the people can look up to and think or but think or say it's the Power Rangers here to save the day like something that would be like recognizable Okay. It it's hard going to detail really about you know like individual Zords wise looks like you know like they are except for like well including the pterodactyl it actually looks like you know it has. You know, like they actually look like the animals or, or the dinosaurs, sorry. You know, sure, like in the TV show, it's like, you know, 
Triceratops just looks like a tank because of the tank treads instead of like actually having you know legs it's because like Hollywood or is it, yeah Lionsgate Studios actually spent the money to make the dinosaur zords look more realistic to a degree they still it looks like giant robots but it also feels like you know it's like natural in a way to where like you know dinosaurs have like you know the legs the wings they took out like some of the more like finer details like the hair the skin and make it look more like what they were supposed to be you know like giant robots you don't you don't actually see them combine but you do see the megazord in the movie I am going to spoil this, okay? I am going to spoil this part only. Goldar in the movie is just basically made out of, you know, liquid gold. It's like every gold in Angel Grove is just melted down into like a liquid form and is just a giant, just a giant monster. I know some of you are going to compare it to the TV show how you know he's just like a giant monkey and like you know gold armor again that's the TV show TV show cheesy as hell it's supposed to look the way it's supposed to movie version has to be different while still maintaining you know like the same style as the TV show that everyone's been growing up whether it's the 70s Super Sentai in Japan or if you've been watching it here in America in 93 or whatever it is in like Europe Europe Africa Russia Australia like whatever version they have and whatever year it started so Goldar in the movie is made out of basically you know gold he looks the way he does is because because of Rita The ending, honestly, it sets up for a sequel. There's really no way around it. It's set up for a sequel.
overall, it's actually pretty good. It's good. Not something that you want to watch like multiple times and like, you know, one sitting or you watch it the one day. You go back to the theaters the next day to go see it. And then the next day and the next and then the next day after that to see it and so forth until it's the run is over in the theaters it's good enough to where you can watch it either once a week ish or once a month every couple or so months or watch it once a year It's really that good. It does have the power, like the new Power Rangers theme being played, if briefly, probably like maybe a couple of minutes, give or take. I will say this. It does have a cameo appearance of not one, but two former Power Rangers from the TV show. The very first Kimberly, Amy Jo Johnson, is in it. And, of course, Jason David Frank himself is in the movie. And no, they don't play as themselves. Like I said, it's just a brief appearance in the movie. Not going to say when. But if you've already seen the movie, you know at what point. If you haven't seen the movie, but you've watched the entire series, whether it was originally aired on TV, or you binged watched it on Netflix... This is something that's... The movie is actually enjoyable. It's set up to where... If done properly... It could be a movie type series. You know, like... Like movie one would be considered episode one. Movie two would be like episode two... And so forth. Um, before I forget, Bill Hader voices Alpha 5. He sounds either like Patton Oswald, like the comedian slash actor, or... Master Shake from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. The actors who played, you know, the Power Rangers in the movie are like fresh, they're new, and each one of them has something about them that sets them apart from the others parts of it is slow but it's supposed to be in terms of story wise so it really can't be helped I mean honestly you can't it can't be like all action from beginning to end. It's for a movie like this, you got to have slow parts. Overall, I would give this movie Uh, 
seven and a half out of ten. Like I said, it's good for what it is. There may be like, you know, one or two scenes or you know, parts of the movie that they could have you know, changed a bit. But it's it's one of those movies where it's not going to be like, you know, number one in America or number one around the world. It would be, my best guess, would be like within the top five. Like, or, or maybe it'll be like the number three spot for like a couple of weeks. Like I said, it's good. If you don't compare, if you don't compare the movie to again the TV show, you would actually find it enjoyable. But if you're constantly going to compare the movie to the TV show, you're going to have a bad time. It does take lines from the TV show. But it doesn't like, you know, do it for like word for word. It's just like one famous line from Rita Repulsa and something from Zordon. But other than that, like I said, it's pretty good. Like, you may think otherwise, but like I said, if you're constantly comparing the movie to the TV show, you're just going to have a bad time. You're going to give a horrible review. You know, you're going to try and turn people away from it. Just view the movie as like its own separate entity or entity sorry Blech. like it's like really it does not have to do with the continuity of the TV show like view this version of the Power Rangers movie as like the start of its own continuity is just a Let's put it this way. It's a lot better than the 95 Power Rangers movie that Hollywood did that actually had the, you know, the TV actors from the show to be in the movie, which, yeah, that's either for another time or not at all. So, if you're going to watch it at least once, just go ahead and go to the theater, view it as its own start of the continuity and not from the TV shows, and just go from there. So, that's my movie review, non-story spoiler, for the Power Rangers movie. Comment below. Like, if, you, if you've seen the movie, comment below your thought or 
your reason why you liked it or you disliked it. So that's pretty much it. Take care, guys.